Hello, beautiful people. How is it going? Uh, it's Alex McKenzie, and welcome to another episode of an experiment called Life. Uh, yeah, so we are down here in Vancouver. It is October 20-something, I think. Uh, we're getting pretty close. No, it's going to be like October 18th. So we just finished our second weekend of the Hungry for Laughs comedy tour. And uh, we just did Vancouver and Duncan. Phenomenal. Uh, Vancouver, the Vogue. We had a really good turnout. Uh, Duncan, we sold out, which was amazing. Thank you so much for everyone who's come out and support so far. Uh, we've raised uh, $5,000 for local charities, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of the month, we have that up to 10000 So this weekend coming up, we're heading to Vernon and Kelowna. That's Friday and Saturday. Ticket sales are looking great. Kelowna might sell out. Uh, Vernon uh, doesn't look like it's going to sell out, but it is a very good sales still. You know, like I'm very, very happy with how everything is going. I'm actually pinching myself. I'm like, uh, yeah, it's just it's phenomenal, man. I've never had anything work this good before. Um, but it's just, I guess you're so used to everything failing that when something goes right, you're like, wow, this is cool. Um, it would be weird if stuff just worked all the time, you know? I don't know what you would do if it was just like, you're just throwing aces all the time. Um, and the shows, dude, I have never had shows like this in my life. Like it is phenomenal. Like when you hear seven or 800 people all laughing in unison, cheering, dude, like the amount of energy in those rooms and it's just like nothing but love, all green lights, everyone just happy to be there. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a very, very exciting time. And again, I'm really just trying to take it all in. It's very stressful at times, like managing the whole tour because it, it's just me and my mom that put all this together. I mean, that's not true. Now we do, like I have like a graphic designer that does the graphics and, uh, you know, and then I have uh, Sonny, our social media manager, who does like a lot of the posting for the tour and stuff. But yeah, in large, it's me and my mother out there slinging this thing and uh yeah dude it uh, it can be a lot sometimes but it's it's definitely worth it and i'm really trying hard to make sure i enjoy it because it's like it's gonna be over and then i don't know i feel like it's the and i say this all the time so i always wonder i'm like dude i feel like this is the start of my professional career and you say that all the time uh just seems to be like after i shot my special you know once i started doing like my headlining my own shows like you know, got an album out. You're like, oh, this is the actual start. And you're like, nah, it's probably all well on its way. But I just think that there's some about it feels different. It feels like you're leveling up, like you're filling up these, some of the biggest, like the biggest theaters in the cities you're going to for the most part. And people are coming out and they're having a great time and all the feedback for the shows have been phenomenal. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's very exciting. And you're like, it's only gonna get bigger and better from here. And you think in 10 years, you're going to look back on this and realize just how cool this time in your life was. Because, um, I mean, there's hiccups all the time. They usually get stressed. But we missed our ferry on the way home from Duncan, which really sucked. I completely miscalculated time. And uh, I stopped uh, for us to go do a photo shoot. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have told us, like, I should have... Uh, made us go back to be like, no, we got to get to the ferry and then we can take photos at the ferry. And, uh, you know, so that, that made us miss our ferry. And then, you know, some of our acts had to walk onto the ferry cause they had to get home. So they weren't able to get a ride and then had to figure out their way from the ferry terminal. And it, uh, yeah, it was a big bunch of mix up that happened and, uh, can be stressful and worrisome, but then you're like, well, just, I don't know. I guess it's easy for me to say don't stress when I was the one who messed it all up, you know? That's the thing. But then, uh, yeah, whatever, I don't know. Just try to get through it and just learn from it and then be a little more accountable or be more aware of time next time. And um, Especially like start of shows, same thing, man. Trying to get everyone to the theater and through sound check and through everything that needs to be done can be very stressful. Um, but it's... Uh, it's all a learning curve. And I always think these things, they just make you better, right? Like you're just learning how to take on bigger and bigger challenges and be put under more amounts of stress and then learning how to manage it and deal with it. And uh, then you can just do bigger and bigger things. Like it's always, and there's always going to be problems. That's my favorite thing from that Tony Robbins quote. It's probably my favorite quote I've heard. And it's like, uh, 
He goes, I can tell each and every one of you what your biggest problem is. And he goes, it's that you don't think you should have any. And I love that because you're like, that's what life is, man. Life is just like a series of problems that you're solving. And then you just have to decide which problems are worth solving. And uh, so, yeah, to to look at any, any issues that come up or any problems that arise, you're like, this is a challenge. This is an opportunity for me to grow and for me to get better. And uh, like just looking at back to, I remember being completely stressed out doing a three show tour back in December or late November of 2021. It was me, Simon King, Dale Ward. We did Lethbridge, Calgary, Banff. And the shows, two of the three shows went bad, not terrible. One lost a bunch of money, one pretty much broke even, and then the other one made a little bit of money. But all in all, I remember losing a couple thousand bucks on the tour, and I remember being extremely upset about it. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna recover from this this sucks, losing all this money, like, and it was just extremely stressful trying to organize all that and then still come up with a loss at the end. And now I don't know if it, <laughs> it's funny because it's like, it's like you're not getting better at making money, but you're getting better at losing it. <laughs> like Now we lost 10 grand on a show and we're not even worried about it. <laughs> you're like, I don't know if that's the way you should be going, you know, should be trending upwards where you're like, you know, before we made 500, now we made five grand. You're like, no, we're just getting more comfortable with losing. <laughs> oh God, that's a good one. Write that down. Um, yeah. But I don't know, man. It's uh, it is going good. Like everything is on the up and up. And my 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 uh, comedy is better than it's ever been, dude. I just went downtown last night in Vancouver, and it felt so fun. I got to go do the House of Comedy and got to go do Full Pint Comedy. So I got to get on stage at two different rooms in one night and just bang out like tight five or ten minute sets. And uh, you feel good. I feel you like this is I am. I'm uh, I'm very very happy with the progress of my comedy career, especially like looking back three or four years ago when I first came to Vancouver. Like you were just trying to get on a show. Like if you could just not be doing an open mic and you could get someone to book you for five minutes on a show, and now you're fortunate enough that you know like you're able to go to these shows last minute and they'll like they'll jam you on the show, which is really cool. Um, and it I think it shows a lot of your your growth as a comic so makes me very happy to be able to do that i remember when i used to watch the guys do that i'm like man look how cool these pros are they just show up and go and bang out a set and absolutely murder and then they just get out of here and then uh, now you get to try and be that guy oh hang on who is it uh betty lou's library that is actually who that i think is a gig in bamf i gotta take that call not right now we'll do it after the podcast we only got a few minutes left um yeah so we're getting ready to leave here where this is on. I'm on my parents' boat, by the way, which is funny to say. I love it. Like parents having a boat. This is a bit that I want to work on in the future. But it's a, like, so my parents have always had boats. Like they started with like a 20 foot boat, then got a 30, then a 40. Now it's like a 50 foot yacht. It's like big. It's fancy. And I always have this thing where I say like, we weren't poor, but we grew up acting like it, you know? Um, and it was that like my mom, everything, no name brand, everything so cheap. And the funny thing, it's like when your parents have a boat, you're not allowed to complain about shit, okay? Anytime, if you tried to say anything, I was like, oh yeah, is that tough? Must be tough on your yacht. And even when it was like a 20 foot boat, that was still the impression. Uh, and it's funny because it's like, you couldn't complain about anything, even the fact that you had to share your food with the cats. But you're like, maybe the cats were sharing their food with you because it was their food. And it's like, your parents just spent all their money on a boat. So then we like, I always look at it like, if you see those people who have like a $100,000 truck parked in their, in the driveway and it's like they're living in like a mobile home and you're like, you got to get your priorities straight. That is how I always picture my parents with their, with their financial decisions with things. It's like the boat is worth more than the house. And you're like, what are, what are we doing here? And then, uh. Yeah, I think it's so funny to be. Look at me just sitting here talking about talking about. Dude, we just lose all this money as I'm sitting on a freaking yacht. Oh God. So yeah, things could be worse, you know. But it's uh, I don't know. I'm a pretty happy boy, man. Pretty happy boy. So we've got like five shows left of the tour. So we do Vernon, Kelowna, Grand Prairie, Red Deer, and then Prince George. 
So if you are in any of those cities, please come on out. Tell your friends about it, man. The shows have been amazing. Um, yeah, just going to keep banging them out and keep uh, keep trying to get a little funnier. And then uh, after this tour, we got corporate season through December. And then we head to the east coast of Canada, which I'm so excited about. I'm so excited to go see my friends out there like Robbie and Trinda. That's going to be so cool. And uh, just to go do, we're doing like Halifax, Fredericton, Moncton, and Charlottetown. So those will be all great shows. And then after that, we do uh, go to Australia. Head to the big land down under and go to Australia. And we're there for a couple months. But anyway, Hunger for Last Comedy Tour. Please tell your friends about it. We love it. And uh, take care. I love you guys. And I will see you next week.